Iranian authorities have hanged Majid Jamali Fashi, who had been accused of being an agent of the Israeli spy agency, the Mossad, for the 2010 killing of a nuclear physicist. 24-year-old Fashi was sentenced to death after being convicted in a trial last August. Iran says that Israel and the U.S. are trying to disrupt its nuclear program through covert operations where at least five Iranian nuclear scientists have been killed in recent years. Also in the news today, an Iranian university professor has been assassinated and another injured in separate bomb attacks in the capital, Tehran. Dr. Majid Shahriyari and Professor Feridun Abbasi were both targeted by car bombs early on Monday. Police say the bombs were attached to the victims' cars by terrorists riding motorcycles. Shahriyari was killed immediately and his wife sustained injuries. Also, Professor Abbasi and his wife received injuries and were transferred to hospital. It's not yet clear who perpetrated the attacks, but investigations are underway. A recent UN resolution has claimed that Abbasi was involved in nuclear activities. The attacks come just weeks after the head of Britain's foreign spy service, John Soros, called for step in, stepping up espionage activities inside Iran. Well, our Tehran correspondent Amir Mehdi Kazemi joins us now live with more. Amir Mehdi, what more do we know about this, uh, these assassination attempts? Well, Homa, this is not the first time that Iranian nuclear physicists are being targeted or either kidnapped in Iran. Nearly a year ago, we had Professor Ali Mohammadi, who was assassinated right in front of his house with a bomb planted in a motorcycle park right next to his car. Or the other case that we had, Shahram Amiri, Iranian nuclear scientist, who was kidnapped by uh, the Americans in Saudi Arabia and then taken to uh, places inside the United States. But these two uh, university professors um, both taught in Shahid Beheshti University, but uh, the attack took place early office hours this morning in Tehran at 7.40 local time. And it was said that um, at the same time, nearly two uh, different motorcyclists drove near the cars of, uh, next to the cars of these two professors and attaching a magnet bomb right to the body of the car and then uh, detonating it with uh, via remote control. And as we uh, have earlier mentioned, uh, that uh, Professor Majid Shahriyari has been killed. And uh, as far as we know, there has been announcements uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the uh, condition of uh, Professor Feridun Abbasi, who is believed to be uh, alive in the hospital. But uh, furthermore, we don't have any outcoming information regarding that. But so far, this has been uh, uh, condemned by many authorities in Iran. The first person to condemn this terrorist act was the head of Iranian Atomic Energy Agency, uh, Dr. Salehi, who uh, blamed the attack on, on Israel and saying that Iran's patience is limited and said that Israel is playing with fire.
Experts call a precision kill. A nuclear scientist who was a key player in Iran's nuclear program killed in broad daylight. And tonight, the dangerous tension between the U.S. and Iran has ratcheted even higher. Iran pointing the finger squarely at the U.S. and our allies in Israel. ABC's Martha Raddatz has been tracking this story all day for us. Martha, good evening. Good evening, Diane. It is a new and terrifying twist in the nuclear standoff with Iran. The covert war to slow down Iran's ability to build a nuclear weapon could instead prompt the regime to strike back. The assassination targeting was so precise that the car the young scientist was riding in was left almost intact, but Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan had no chance of survival. Two motorcyclists tracked the car through Tehran's morning rush hour, lobbing a magnetic bomb right at Roshan, a mission that seemed right out of a spy thriller like Syriana. It has all the earmarks of an Israeli operation, very sophisticated, very particular, and very effective. The Iranians accused not just the Israelis, but Americans as well. I want to categorically deny any United States involvement. Rashan was deputy director of the Natanz uranium enrichment facility. There is speculation today that Iran killed the scientists to pin it on the Americans in Israel. But former Mossad agents say Rashan was far too valuable. Rashan is the fifth nuclear scientist targeted for assassination in the last two years. Four died. Today's attack is the newest in the increasingly dangerous tension between the U.S. and Iran. In October, the U.S. said the Iranians were hatching a plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington. Just last month, the Iranians threatened to close down the Strait of Hormuz, where nearly one quarter of the world's oil transits. And this week, the Iranians sentenced a former U.S. Marine to death. Today's assassination could increase his risk of execution and drive the Iranians to take even more radical steps. If this had happened in the United States or in Israel, we would consider it an act of terrorism, an act of war, and we would be seeking to retaliate. Iran has a lot of experience with terrorist acts like this, and they have the capability to retaliate. This is not over. This is just beginning. Officials do believe that the assassinations and other covert activity has slowed the Iranian nuclear program, Diane, but it certainly hasn't stopped it. And what about Israel? What reaction today? You know, Diane, we've been looking for responses from Israel all day, and where did we find it? Facebook, with the Israeli Defense Force spokesman saying, I don't know who settled the score with the Iranian scientist, but I am certainly not shedding a tear, not exactly a denial there. What we heard from the Iranian leadership is unfortunately just sugar-colored words, words designed to deceive, words designed to lull the international community into a, a, a complacency. The simple fact is that Iran continues to enrich uranium, continues to move aggressively forward to have a nuclear weapon, and this must stop. We don't need words, we need action. We need the Iranians to stop enriching uranium. We need them to stop moving forward on plutonium, and until they stop, this reckless path to a nuclear weapon, the international community has to keep the pressure on. Don't discount the viable option of a military strike on your country. That was the message Paris sent to Iran during an interview with CNN in Jerusalem. Responding to a question about whether the military option was a credible threat, Israel's president said he hopes the Iranians take it seriously. If they do, it won't come to using the military option. But if the Iranians think it's a bluff, Paris warned it may lead to a war. Paris warned it may lead to a war. Israel is playing with fire. Also